Now, all number of electoral records have been broken today, and there are a lot of statistics to digest. But when you give each constituency in the UK equal visual weight, it really lays bare the enormous shift we've seen from the 2019 election to now. Well, I'm joined now by Alistair Campbell, who worked for Tony Blair. He's now a podcaster who writes children's books about democracy. Sir Craig Oliver, who worked for David Cameron, and Liz Lloyd, who worked for Nicola Sturgeon in the Scottish Government. Alistair Campbell first. This idea of loveless landslide, a term coined by our political editor Gary Gibbon, a, a vote against the Tories but not for Keir Starmer, does that store up problems for the future? Well, it is a fact that people wanted to get rid of the Tories, but there had to be a viable alternative, and that was the difference between today and four years ago. The country sees a viable alternative, and loveless or not, a win is a win, and a landslide is a landslide, and a big majority is the opportunity to deliver the kind of change that Labour are talking about. So I don't buy all this stuff that this is some sort of, you know, Pyrrhic victory. It's a huge victory. He's only the fourth person who's led Labour from opposition into majority government, and he's now got a mandate for change. Well, Sir Craig Oliver, absolute catastrophe for the Tories. Do you see any leadership candidate capable of rebuilding the Tory party, or is it over? I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg just said on this programme that Boris Johnson should be a contender. Look, there'll be endless people mouthing off in the next day or so about who they think should be doing what. And I think that the thing the Conservative Party needs to do is just take a little bit of time and reflect. And perhaps that's the last service um, or great service that Rishi Sunak can do to the Conservative Party, which is stay on as leader, allow them some breathing space, take stock and not take rash decisions immediately. Mm. Um, well, Liz Lloyd, I just wonder if you could tell us how the SNP comes back from that. The same sort of question that I just asked Sir Craig, really. Is this an existential problem for the SNP? I don't think so, no. But I think they do need to take some time. And as Craig has just said for the Conservatives, they need to reflect on why the result was what it was tonight, why they couldn't capture the disaffection with the Tories, why it all went to Labour, um, which is a lot to do with government. It's partly to do with the mess the party's been in over the year. And I think it's also that people aren't quite sure what the SNP, aside from independence, is standing for at the moment. It, it, was, it was a vote against the SNP's record, wasn't it? I think in part, yeah, it was mainly a vote against the Tories. That anti-Tory vote could have come to the SNP if people hadn't also been judging the SNP's record in government and the difficulties the parties had over the last year, which, mm. you know, didn't put it in the best position to capture those votes. Alistair Campbell, we heard Sir Keir Starmer talk repeatedly about service. Mm. I mean, do you think he could surprise us with his radicalism? Might he take some tough decisions, some brave decisions early on? Would you advise him to do that? I would, because I think that the, this early period of his premiership, he's going to have enormous power. The power of the majority, the power of the office, and I think you're already seeing that. I was noticing when I was on Channel 4 last night, the live audience watching Keir Starmer speaking, they were watching him in a different way to how they might have done the day earlier, because he is now the Prime Minister. And I think when you say that growth is the number one mission, just take housing, take planning reform. I mean, it's, this is the first time I can remember a campaign where a party has put planning reform at the heart of its campaign. They've now got to do that, and that will be difficult. We live in a NIMBY country. We're going to have to, to, we're going to, have to change that because people are going to have to face some very difficult constituencies, including in their own constituencies. So he could be unexpectedly radical on planning in particular, do you think? Well, I mean, I think he, I think he could be radical on all sorts of fronts. I think there's a really interesting... Tom Baldwin's book about Keir Starmer, I think there's a really interesting narrative in there. Every stage of his career, he's kind of been underestimated, constantly written off, and then over-delivers. And he's done it through his legal career, he's done it through his political career to become the leader of the Labour Party in next to no time. And I suspect he will do it as Prime Minister in very difficult circumstances. Well, advise the Tory party in the way that Alistair Campbell's just advised the Labour Party. How do they deal with Farage? Well, look, I think that they've got to first and foremost recognise that this was a punishment election. It's pretty clear that it was a referendum on this Conservative Party and the British people went out of their way to find ways to vote against them. And I think what it proved is, look, you can't do party gate, you can't do the mini budget, you can't tell people you're going to slash net migration and see it double and then expect people to listen to you. So I think that what the Conservative Party's got to do is realise the mistakes it made also look take but invite a Farage into the fold? No, it? I think they need to take a lesson from the, from the Labour Party. Not so long ago they were trying to suggest a revolutionary socialist should be our Prime Minister, but Keir Starmer tacked back towards the centre. That's 
how he showed people that he was elected. And I fear that the Conservative Party, it's just too easy to say that you add the reform vote to the Conservative vote and therefore you're going to magically get ahead of the Labour Party. Elections are won in a much more central position. Wait, so which contender best represents that? Because a lot of the centrists have lost their seats, haven't they? Well, look, to, if I'm honest, I'm struggling to see. I wouldn't be... I'd be interested, I think, to, if some people try and throw... Jeremy Hunt into the ring. Um, the reason I say that is that I think that they think he's a calm, moderate voice. Whether the the people would go for that, I don't know. But and look, he worked his socks off in that he did campaign, work, didn't he? He worked his socks off in this campaign. But look, I think you're going to see Kemi Badenoch having a go. You're going to see Pretty Patel having a go, James Cleverly. There's going to be a lot of people out there. Farage is coming for you, isn't he? He's made that clear today. Well, not well, you personally, but Labour. No, I suppose you'd like to. Look, I think that you can't write off Nigel Farage, and reform did come second in lots of places. But I think that you cannot beat Farage at his own game. You can't out-Farage Farage. Populism has never worked. He is a creature of populism. He is somebody who doesn't see policies as being there to solve challenges and problems, is there to exploit them. Labour has to show it can, ex it can solve the problems the country's facing, including the problems that he exploits. And that's the only way to do this. Liz Lloyd, in a way, you're the populist that became the incumbents and now you're getting punished for being the incumbents. Is independence now off the table or are there independent supporting Labour uh, supporters who could provide a way forward for you? Yes, those people could provide a way forward, but I think in the short term it is off the table. And that's something that actually the public already know. It's one of the reasons why independence wasn't a successful rallying cry in this campaign, is that people know it's not happening, certainly this side of the 2026 Holyrood elections. But there were a lot of people who will have voted Labour last night who are independence supporters and who will be looking at the Holyrood election differently. Scottish voters are used to changing their mind between elections. They're used to using their votes quite cleverly in elections. So, you know, this was a very good night for Labour in Scotland. I'll not take that away from them. But the contest, if you like, starts again today, tomorrow, um, for the Scottish Parliament election with the parties on more or less equal standing. Alistair Campbell, Keir Starmer sort of nodded to the fact that, you know, there was a disgruntlement with politicians of all parties, um, and that was reflected in the turnout figures. What do you do about that? You have to rebuild trust. I mean, and I think he's made a very good start on that by putting this concept of public service, and it's ridiculous he even has to, but after the last few years, that is necessary to show that you have a cabinet there, MPs there. There's going to be so many new MPs coming in. That will be like a breath of fresh air through that. Point. And a very working-class cabinet. Very working-class cabinet, which I think is a good thing per se. Most state-educated uh, cabinet we've, we've ever had. I think just picking up something there that Liz said, this is your tactical voting. I think one of the reasons Labour's vote is where it is, there were an awful lot of Labour people who voted Lib Dem yesterday mm. because they understood that the, the, getting the Tories out was so important. So I think there was an awful lot of tactical voting. But now Labour has the opportunity to show it can govern, to show the values that Keir Starmer has been talked about are real and can deliver and see off Farage. Yeah. Briefly, same question to you. How do you deal with this disgruntlement, a plague on all your houses? Well, look, the, the a big hope for the Conservative Party is that the electorate remains as volatile as it's shown it's been over the last couple of weeks, that they can hope that they can turn this around. Keir Starmer did it in a parliament. They think they might be able to. And I do think that Alistair makes a good job of saying how well Labour have done. Of course they've done well, but it's looking a bit a mile wide and an inch deep. And it was a pretty lacklustre campaign. They let the Conservative parties destroy themselves. They didn't do a brilliant job in enthusing people. And um, very briefly, Liz Lloyd, same question to you about how do you enthuse disgruntled voters? I think voters need to see people doing stuff. They need to see their politicians and their governments, and this applies to the new Labour government as much as it applies to the SNP government, delivering for them. I think Liz, the risk to Labour is they may run out of time to get things done. Liz, I'm so sorry. We're out of time. I'm really sorry to cut you off, but that is all we have time for this evening.